Hey everybody, this is Seth Kinney, Kinney Been It Real. I am totally honored to have Manny Coates on the Just One Dime podcast today. Manny, thank you so much for being here. I don't even think you need an introduction. I'll still give you one, but thank you so much for being here on this interview today. Appreciate it being on your show and uh, coming to your event and speaking. It's going to be awesome. Let's do this. I'm ready. I'm pumped. There's, um, as you guys know, we have what's called the Summit. It is the first Just One Dime conference, and it's going to be at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, March 11 to 13. And Manny's going to be talking about how to rank to the top position for any keyword. And the reason I love this topic, Manny, is because it's so relevant to people who are selling on Amazon, like ranking for keywords. When I started on Amazon, I had no, I didn't even understand the value of keywords. I mean, I thought, oh yeah, that's something for Google and SEO. I just need to sell stuff. I didn't understand the idea of how, why keywords matter so much. And we sort of stumbled our way into success on Amazon. And then later as we went, started to realize, oh my goodness, this is so big. So I'm just curious, what is your experience, Manny, when you talk to people about their understanding of keywords in general? I know you know some really advanced sellers and I'm sure you hear about from a lot of beginning sellers as well. I think the, the keyword game, as you would call it, uh, changes over time, right? So what used to work, even last year or the year before this, I've, I've been doing this for two years now. Just a little backstory in case people want to, you know, like who is this guy or anything like that. I've been selling uh, only on Amazon for about two years before that I've done um, mobile apps and stuff, but I did pretty well. I did 3.3 uh, million last year. And part of that is uh, one of the big reasons for that is these launches like you're talking about and getting things to rank to the top. And the keyword game, I call it, is is always changing. So what worked a year ago, for example, where you could take something, you could put multiple keywords in different places and they all mix together. You can still do that, but we're finding that, for example, that's not as effective as using exact match and putting them at the very beginning, shortening your titles now. It used to be like max out the titles as, as much as possible. Yeah, they would stuff those with keywords like crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it still works. I, we just did a listing um, at the end of last week uh, that is now one of the top three products in its, in its category and it was fully stuffed. I mean, but it's, it, it read really, uh, really well. And yeah. the main keyword phrase, the exact phrase, were the first two words of the title. And uh, I think that's pretty important. Tell us a little bit about how you started. I remember the first way I got to know you was through this really interesting application called Frankenstein. And I have to be honest with you, the name of it got my interest. Like, what's Frankenstein have to do with Amazon? And I started using it to replace my keywords so that I wouldn't have any duplicates. You have one side and you click the button here, they're on the other side and you have no more duplicates. And then I use those to stuff them in the back end. Notice I use the word stuff. <laughs> and we would just stuff that thing as much as we can. It was like, you know, really picky with the title and the bullet points. And then yeah. A machine of you know as much as we can get in the back room to cover everything which obviously is not very targeted not as effective but how did you get started and what was your what was your first software tool that you guys came out with for Amazon yeah so we came from the mobile side so I already had I had a development team um, I already knew how to manage and work with uh, developers and so when I got into Amazon I was like, all right, there's, and this is two years ago. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but there weren't that many tools at the time. Like now there's a ton of tools. And one of the things I was doing, I was like, you know what? There's really not any good, uh, there's no systems out there for like dumping all my keywords into it and making sure that I can optimize my listing and make sure that I use all the keywords. So I created something called Scribbles. And then right after that, I created Frankenstein. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But Scribbles was the very first one to answer your question. And the reason I created this, and I'm sure every single person that's listening to this could probably relate if they've, if they've launched multiple products before, is you, and especially if you've been in this business for more than a year, you have all these keywords, right? You've done all your keyword research. Right. Um, and then you start stuffing them wherever you can. I want, you know, you've been taught, hey, let's put the important stuff in the title. And let's put mm -hmm. next important stuff in the bullet points. Let's throw things in the back end. And you're hoping to use everything, right? So that all of these keywords in some form are in your listing. Well, if you, if you finish and then you walk away and go have dinner, go out with your friends, whatever, and then come back, you know, a few hours later and read it, oftentimes you'll be like, oh, that sounds weird. I, I don't know why I wrote that. And you'll change it, right? We've all done that. And then one of these days, or one of those days, I actually changed uh, the title and I took the main keyword. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take it out of there. It was one of the top keywords. I think it might've been the main one and I'm going to move it somewhere else. And I got distracted. Something happened and I didn't put it anywhere else. And I came back to it and started editing. So I took out, I inadvertently took out like one of the most important keywords, never put it back in my listing. Didn't know. From your title? From the title? 
from the title. Yeah, it was gone. It wasn't even in there. And I didn't know the, about indexing or any of that kind of stuff. And so I just ran it and sales were good and stuff. And it wasn't until some time later that I realized I'm like, uh, I'm like, man, I'm not getting any sales for this one keyword. That's weird. What's going on? And it wasn't in there. So I created Scribbles, which is basically a tool. And by the way, guys, it's free. It's, it's been free from the very beginning. It was something that I created for myself and I opened it up to all the podcast listeners and all that kind of stuff. So you guys can use it. You can dump all your keywords in there, right? Like thousands of keywords or hundreds or whatever you want. And then as you're typing them out into your title, because there's fields, right? Just like you would have on, on Seller Central. As you type them out, they disappear, right? And your goal is to make this whole list disappear. That means you've got every single keyword being used. And if you go back and you make a change, you're like, hmm, let me delete this. It'll pop back in there. So you can't forget, right? It's always going to be there. So that's a free tool. And in Frankenstein, the reason we called it Frankenstein is you can do so much keyword manipulation in that, in that uh, tool right? You can add stuff to the beginning and to the end and delete things and make things capital and do, you know, whatever. And we felt like Frankenstein, the monster, right, is, is made up of a bunch of different parts, right, to make up, uh, you know, the beast. And that's kind of what your listing is. If you just use a few keywords and stuff, they don't mean anything. But if you put everything together in the right way, then it becomes Frankenstein. It comes to life. It is huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why we called it that. And also, Frankenstein is easier to remember than, you know, like super keyword optimizing tool or something. You'll never remember that. That's true. Yeah. And then we had a bunch of other tools that we did and, and turned that into Helium 10. What do you think of this statement, Manny? For you to understand Amazon, at least 30% of the necessary knowledge selling in Amazon has got to be about keywords. Do you think that's accurate? Do you think it should be larger? That's a good question. I never had anybody ask it that way. I, I think, I don't know about a percentage, but I think keywords are absolutely critical. I would say the most critical thing would probably be photography. I think photography is right at the top of the list. I mean, hopefully you've got some basic keywords in there, right? Nobody's just going to go in without anything. So people will find your listing to some extent, uh, but no matter how good your keywords are, if you've got garbage photography, if your thumbnail is terrible, I was going to buy it. Just won't click in there. Right. Uh, no matter how good your, your keywords are, um, if you have really, really good keywords and a really good image, um, then you're going you're gonna to rock it. But yeah, I think there's, you've got to make sure that your index, that you're showing up. Um, people think sometimes you've got to launch. I'm going to talk at your event, for example, how to launch to, to page one. Yeah. Um, but you don't always have to do a launch. Um, we just did a, a, a recent, uh, I call it a launch, where we gave away almost nothing, just a few, few units. Uh, we, I think the, the formula showed that we had to give away like 800 units or something like that. And yeah. then we gave away... Uh, it was like, uh, I think less than 10% of that number. Um, and it's ranking well, it's the, it's in the, t on the page one, uh, for the top two keyword phrases, nice. uh, very expensive product, you know, uh, well over a hundred dollars doing uh, double digit sales every single day in terms of That's units. Awesome. So, and that, and that was launched a week ago. Um, so it's not even within the eight days right. of, that it needs to start ranking CPR method that we talk about. Yeah. So if, and that's just based off of putting keywords in the right place and using the right stuff, doing a lot of keyword research. You have to do that. You, uh, to answer your question, yeah. Do I think 30% is reasonable? Absolutely. I yeah. think it's just one component. Um, it might be maybe more than 30%. I just, yeah. It's a random thought that hit me one day and I started sharing this and people th yeah. will look at me and they're like, wait a minute, like 30% really? And here's where it came from. So to find products, I need to know keywords. Because if I can find out what people are searching for first, I can build my product around what they're searching for. Instead of starting with the product, I'm starting with what they're searching. Then when I'm building out my listing, it's all about keywords so they can find it. And then when I want to optimize based on my ad campaigns, I still need keywords to get it ranking correctly and make sure I'm using the right keywords and not too competitive and all that. And then to really grow and scale and stay competitive, you know, the part where you kind of just you give a little nudge here and you give a little nudge there. And it's the great part where it's just running and it's going and the income's coming in, but you just have to pamper it. But all of a sudden a new keyword starts ranking better or another competitor comes, you know, have to deal with that. And how do I respond at every stage? It's keywords, you know, and, and it really, in this, this thought, and, and I encourage those of you guys listening, remember this, when you understand keywords, you understand your customer because that's what the customer is looking for. And that's why I'm really excited to have Manny, to have you um, at the summit. Um, and the huge topic, of course, is how do I rank for a keyword? In other words, if someone goes on Amazon.com and they type in, oh, I hate this example. Why did, why did fidget spinner and garlic press come? I'm, literally, that's just what entered my mind. Um, so fit, Tactical fit, flashlight. Here we go. Tactical flashlight um, in fish oil. <laughs> so if I type in tactical flashlight, where does my listing show up? How do I get it onto that first page or even 
those top three spots. Can you tell me what are some of the strategies that you've used that listeners could literally take home today and say, okay, I heard many coaches say that. I'm going to try this. I'm going to go into Seller Central and I'm going to try this right now. So there's different ways of doing it. Um, the way I do it is it, it requires an investment, okay? Just like anything that's really good, typically you've got to pay for certain services or tools or whatever the case is. Uh, I'm going to mention our tool because that's what we use, but we use uh, what's called Cerebro. I don't know if you've used Cerebro, but the reason I like Cerebro is before you even choose how you're going to launch, you need to look at all the keywords that you can get. Cerebro is a reverse ASIN tool that just pulls a bunch of stuff. So what I'll do is I'll go out there and I'm going to try to summarize this quickly, but you go out there and you take like your five or six top competitors. Okay. Um, that would be your competitors if you're launching yeah. and you run all the, the tool on all of these. And now you have all these keywords and you can select all five of them in Cerebro and you can bring up all the keywords in one place, right? It illuminates all the duplicates and you can have everything. What I then look for is the search volume. And I look at exact search volume because there's exact search volume and there's broad, uh, uh, the broad search volume, mm -hmm. um, exact search volume. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by that. And I'm going to now start looking at the top stuff. I'm going to eliminate the stuff that just doesn't make sense for this product because it's, it's a software tool. It's going to pull up weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but the good stuff I'm going to look at and I'm going to say, okay, is it reasonable for me to, to rank number one for this keyword phrase if it gets a million searches per month as a new person with almost no reviews? Probably not, right? Um, I could try to do it, but I'm going to have to give away so many units. It's going to be ridiculous. So I have to decide which, I got to pick my battles. Which one can I actually go for? and actually get. And if I can get two or three of these guys to rank pretty well, and my listing is better than all the other ones, um, then I can actually start moving up the ranks. So the thing I ask myself is, let's say I go for a keyword phrase. I type it into Amazon. I will go and look at the results on page one, and I just picture myself. All right, my product is right here. And you can even Photoshop it in, right? You Photoshop your icon over, or your thumbnail over another one that's like in position two or three. Yeah. And then just ask yourself, would I click on this? Is my thumbnail going to get me to click on this one over the other ones? Yes or no? If no, then you got to go back to the drawing board. If yes, let's look at the rest of the stuff. How many reviews do I have? Are they all five stars, first of all? Do I have at least, you know, three, four reviews? Three or four is enough unless you're getting into something where, you know, all your competitors have four-digit reviews. Yeah, they have a thousand reviews. It'll probably be tough. But I look at that. How is my price? Is my price better than all my competitors on that page or at least around me based on what I have? If I have all these things going for me, then I know that if I get into that position, I'll start getting organic sales, at least for that keyword phrase, and I'll move to the top. And if I get enough, if I can get enough of those uh, organic sales, it's actually going to push all my other keywords that are in my title up in search volume as well. I, a lot of people don't know this, but you get a little bit of juice for every sale you make, regardless of where the sale comes from, and your all the keywords and keyword phrases in your title. So if you can get enough sales, all of those keywords will go up. And I've ranked number one for keywords that I've never gone after just because they're in my title and I was driving enough sales volume from very specific keyword phrases I was going after. Does that make sense? So in other words, the keywords that you were going after actually helped to push up the keywords you weren't focusing on. So it had sort of a residual effect. It, it, it overflowed into the other keywords. Right. So uh, I'm going to simplify this. I, I don't know the exact formula for this. I'm, I don't work for uh, Amazon, but let's just say that for a keyword phrase, if someone types that keyword phrase and they buy your product, you get 100% of the rank juice for that keyword, right? For that sale. Mm -hmm. Every other keyword in your, in your title, uh, let's say that gets 1% juice. Like a little right? bit of credibility. Yeah. yeah. So, so you would need a hundred regular sales and that would be the same, let's say, as somebody buying with an exact phrase for any of those keywords in your title. So if you get enough sales, you start moving up and I've seen it uh, countless times. Um, and I, you have to have real search volume. There's so many tools out there. You look at them, they all have different search volume and you can't base it on, I mean, we have, we have really, really good search volume. We, we, uh, the, the Helium 10 tools that we have, Cerebro, um, is based off of billions of data points. I won't use any other tool. It's really good. If you talk to, you know, if you go to high level events and we talk to the people that are using our tools, that's what they use um, because you need accurate data. You can't just, if you're driving on the freeway and your speedometer is sometimes right and sometimes it's crazy wrong, how do you know how fast you're going, right? Yeah. That's the way this is. And you, you've got to find the right keyword. It's not always the best keyword. You know, you might have to take the second or third one and it's got to be super related. That's the other thing. If, I, if we're doing tactical flashlight, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go after tactical flashlight. I'm not going to go after night flashlight. I'm not going to go after, right. maybe, Has to maybe be super I'll relevant. go after LED flashlight, but it would be like a secondary or third uh, yeah. you know, type keyword. Yeah. Um, you got to pick, pick the battles and figure out which ones you can go after. The formula for launching, if you want to get to number one, that's a whole different story. I'm going to be talking about that on stage. Um, but right. yeah, it's, it's a matter of figuring out, you can use the search volume uh, that's in Cerebro. 
Um, and based on that, there's a formula. I did a blog. It, it takes like 20 minutes to explain it. Um, but the tool will actually tell you, hey, just release um, or, or use coupon codes, discount things very, very heavily, 80, 90%, and then give away this number of units per day for eight days using this special two-step storefront URL. And then you'll, you should be able to get that to the top of page one uh, using that data. I love the two-step storefront URL. I listened to your podcast on that. We've been using a different one that doesn't include the timestamp so that Amazon can't hack that. So basically, it's different, but it's similar. But yours takes them straight to the storefront. And the first thing, the only one that pops up if it's a long enough keyword is that. I tested it and it, it works. That's awesome. It works. it works great. Yeah. And you and the cool thing is when you do click that, it does create an actual uh, a unique timestamp that's that's officially good for right. that particular session. The old super URLs, a lot of people say, oh, it, you know, they think a two-step URL is a super URL. I guess technically it probably would be, but the old super URLs were where you would go, you do a search, you find the product, you click into it. Now you're on the product page, you grab that URL and that's what you use. That's a super URL, right? When you're driving it there. Um, and that doesn't work. Uh, I don't think it works anymore or it doesn't work very well. It's in our experience, Amazon seems to have dehacked that based on the timestamp. So the second time someone uses it, it no longer works. So on keyword volume versus keyword ranking, and, and, and again, these are some of these are my own internal terms that we use in our on our team. So keyword ranking as in the autocomplete, like there's keyword tool dominator, there's Jod toolbox autocomplete, where you know you type in the keyword and it shows you, if you go to amazon.com, let's say you type in tactical flashlight or just tactical F, and then it shows you flashlight, firefly, you know, right. anything else. And then if you type in G, it shows you all those. And if you use an asterisk, it shows you what's, what should go in between. So there's some tools that do that out there really effectively, and then they give it a ranking. So that's something that a lot of people I know use. And then the search volume, here's where a lot of people struggle. Let's say they go to, and, and I'm not ragging on other keyword search volumes when I say this, but they go to Merchant Words, they go to Keyword Planner, they go over to Keyword Tool to IO, and they get the volume. And it'll even say, <laughs> it'll say Amazon in the tab. And I've called up these companies, and I said, look guys, help me understand, is the search volume really coming from Amazon or is it coming from Google? And they're like, well, the autocomplete is coming from Amazon. I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. But is the search volume actually from Amazon or are you putting Amazon there because you're advertising to Amazon sellers, but the autocomplete is coming from Amazon, but the volume is other search engines. And it's really hard to get that search volume. Tell me a little bit about how you guys do that. I think that's awesome. So you guys have that search volume. Is it directly Amazon? Is it multiple different data points that give you an approximate? Is it from Google? What does that look like when people yeah. use this tool? The tool you were talking about that does autocomplete stuff. We have a tool called Mag um, Magnet mm -hmm. um, that does that exact same thing. You go in there, you type in tactical flashlight, and then it will go in there and it will grab all the autocompletes. It'll actually, what it does, it goes out to a search engine. Um, it will grab additional keywords, bring them back in and do additional uh, searches on Amazon. All the data that you see that we're displaying is from Amazon. It's not coming from, from anywhere else. We're taking some of the keyword data, uh, not data, the, the actual keyword phrases and adding those in, uh, to, but then we, we validate those through Amazon. So if they don't show up, for example, uh, with Magnet, if, if there's a keyword phrase that shows up after your search, it is showing up in the autocomplete on, on Amazon. So you're not getting any kind of weird data or anything like that. Um, you're absolutely right. Most of the tools out there, what they're doing is they're going out and we used to do this with Magnet. That was the version 1.0 that we had um, a year ago. As you go out there and you grab, uh, use Google or Bing or something like that, you look at the search volume for a specific keyword. And you say, okay, this is what it's getting on a search engine. And then you run an algorithm and everybody runs their proprietary algorithm on <laughs> yeah. it. Right? There's like 400,000 of those proprietary algorithms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so you get that number. So we don't do that. All of our data now is coming from Amazon. We have probably, I can't say for sure, I don't know what everybody's database is, but I, I would feel comfortable saying we've got one of the largest um, um, databases in terms of all the points of data that we check, billions and billions, with, that's with a B now, super accurate. Uh, we use it for all the launches. I just did three products uh, in uh, launched in the end of November, uh, and we did uh, over a million dollars in sales in December. Um, half of that coming from, or almost half of that, I think, coming from just those three products, uh, six figures in profit from three products that didn't exist before November, yeah. just from using the tools, using Cerebro. And Finding Magnet, out what people are searching. Yeah, yeah, doing the keywords research, putting it in there, and then doing the launch using what's called, we call it the CPR method, because CPR you know, you're giving something life, right? Yeah, I've seen you talk about it in your yeah. podcast. Yeah. It works, works great. Um, but yeah, 
we're, we're using real actual, uh, actual data. If you, if you use another tool, um, I tell people, I go, don't use our CPR formula that we wrote about in our blog and use data from this tool because right. it's not going to work. It's based right. off of the data that we've got, which is real data. Yeah. There's, this is super cool for those of you guys listening. Think about it. So you guys launched two products in November, did a million in December. Three products. Three products, did a million off of that. How do you go from zero to a million, everyone? Think about it. Sitting at your computer, researching, understanding the data, turning that data into action, understanding what your customer needs and providing a solution and the result is money in your account. I mean, that concept right there is so powerful. It wasn't zero to a million. Um, we did, uh, we did 1.6 million the previous year. That was my first full year. Right. I did 3.3 million last year, but we did in December alone, it was just over a million. I think it was 1. I think 1.3 million, 1.33 million or something like that with a large percentage of it coming from these three products that were geared right. specifically for Christmas, uh, for the holiday season. We were right. like, what kind of gifts Holy do people sales. give people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, I just want to clarify, we didn't, yeah. we didn't go to zero to a million. A big portion of that million dollars did come from those three products though. Awesome. No okay. problem. And thanks for that clarification. This concept, you guys, because a lot of people, they're going to say, hey, you know, to sell on Amazon, there's just three simple steps or four things. If you just do these four things, you become a millionaire. Here's the truth. It's not easy. The competition is huge. It's hard. You're going to work your ass off to make it happen. So for those of you guys who are listening right now and you're thinking, oh, all I do is I do this, this, and this, it's done. No, we're going to keep it real. No, it's not that easy. You're going to fail your way into success. You're going to run into problems. You're going to run out of inventory faster than you thought because you got it too late before the holidays or you thought you were going to launch, but oh my goodness, Chinese New Year, the factory closed down, new workers coming in the next month. They don't know how to build my product. These things are reality, you guys. Here's the other side of that coin. Manny's sitting at his computer and he's working, studying, understanding the data and then turning that into a product and the result is money. This concept, Manny, I absolutely love, and we talk about this a lot, and I'm sure you applied this concept in developing apps as well. The, the idea is this, building a business really is as simple as providing something of value to people. How can I provide value to someone if I don't know what they want? How do I know what they want if I don't understand the keywords that they're searching for? And just connecting all those together and that results in money is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And the ability to do that all from here, from home, simply on the computer contacting the right people to get it shipped, to get it taken in, to get the FNSQ label and all that on there. Like th that concept is mind blowing. And I wanna encourage those of you guys who are watching this right now, you can make this happen. You can do this. Manny didn't start out a millionaire. Neither did Seth Kniet. We started figuring it out and hustling and wrestling and trying to find a way to make it happen. And that, that inside fire that burns, it makes you wanna drive and get it done it results in reward, but it is a bloody path along the way and it is totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know what? And people don't give up. Don't just because you have a hiccup or you've got a failed product or whatever, it happens. My very first product um, was liquid chalk markers. Okay. I know guys that are crushing it with liquid chalk markers right now, right? They're doing millions a year with it. And that product, and I, I got into this two years ago. They just got into this like in the last year. Yeah. Um, it just failed for me. I didn't know exactly what I was doing. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't even, it didn't even pass the three foot drop test. You know, it exploded all over the place. <laughs> it was just bad. I was overpaying. I was asking these, uh, one of my buddies who's doing it. I'm like, what are you paying for your, like, I think it's a 12 pack of, of liquid chalk markers. And, uh, you know, it's like one quarter of the price I was paying. So I just didn't do the, the research to get the right pricing. Um, you know, photography guys, you got to get that right. You got to make sure that your image, this is one of those things that I'll give you a few tips here. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do it. You know, you've got a square image on Amazon that you can use. If you're, if you're using like a, uh, you know, a landscape type mode, it's going to shrink it down to fit that square. So your image, your thumbnail is going to look small. You want your thumbnail product to look big. So whatever you're taking a picture of, let's just say it's this brush, right? You want to make sure that the brush, let me see what the thing is, it's taking up the whole screen, right? Obviously, that's a terrible, terrible shot. But you want it like a pixel away from the top, a pixel away from the bottom. Now, if I, if I do this, right, and I'm, I'm right here, that's as big as I can get. But if I turn it diagonal, I can get it even bigger by going in. So if you can do these little tricks, make it stand out from everything else, do it. I had a buddy who had uh, dog treats and he actually spelled out the word dog treat with his dog treats and took a photo of that with the white background. 
he got writing, he got actual word that's legitimately terms of service compliant because he's using his products to actually write some. And when you're scrolling through the thumbnails of dog treats and you see the word dog treat spelled out with the actual dog treats, it grabs your attention. Yeah, right? that's like two in one. They see it, they see the product and they read the product together. It's like it engages two parts of the brain. Absolutely, yeah. And if you can use coupons, you can get a little cute. Anything that you can, you know, uh, drive attention to your listing, do it. You don't need a lot of reviews. Uh, a lot of people think you need a lot of reviews. Um, I launched most of my stuff with like three reviews that are five star. But one of the things that I do is I try to get a video review for one of my first ones. Everybody knows somebody. It's against terms of service to use friends or family. So <laughs> don't, do don't do that, but, guys. We would never do it. <laughs> if you did, you would just in case. We're not going to do it, but just in case you so happen to know someone who, right? Get a video review, right? And get yeah. that thing up there. Uh, video reviews are typically going to be upvoted. It's going to be, you know, people like that stuff. So they're, you're, you know, how people say, yes, they like the video or they yeah. like the, yeah, the review. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be on there. And when someone goes through a review, let's say you've got 17 competitors, but you're the only one, even though you have less total reviews, you're the only one with a really cool video review. They're going to buy your product. I see it over and over. People aren't doing this kind of stuff. Those are little tips that can make a really big difference. Go for oversized products. Forget about what, I don't know what, what, you, uh, what you teach uh, or if you've changed your, your mindset, Seth, on, on this stuff. I used to say, go for small packages. It makes sure it fits in stuff. a shoebox, under a pound. Everyone yeah. said it. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, and, and there's so many podcasts and so many videos out there now that everybody that's new that comes in, they start absorbing this and they're like, oh, I got to get something that's under a pound that fits in a right. box that's this big. I don't do that anymore. I'm like, if you're going to get into something, if you can afford it, try to find a product that you can sell for over a hundred bucks, right? Um, and something that's maybe a little bit bigger because there's a couple of things that are going to happen from that. One, your margins typically are going to be higher, right? Because you can buy something for 40 bucks and sell it for 150 bucks. Maybe margin Two, for C as well. Right. You don't have to sell as many units, right? The number of reviews that your competitors are going to have are typically going to be way smaller, right? They just, you're not selling up 5,000 units of these things a month, right? You're there's selling fewer like, people you know, and there's fewer competitors trying to sell in that category because people are still, the masses are think, still thinking inside a shoebox under a pound. Right, right. So when you get this in there, you might find that the number one competitor only has 32 reviews. So 32 reviews, if you can get three or four reviews from your friends, it's not that bad. If you got three or four reviews and you're selling a brush and there's, yeah, 1,700 reviews, it becomes tough. So definitely get a video review. Definitely, I think if you can go after bigger stuff, uh, do that. Obviously, bigger things have some some cons to it. It's longer to get the stuff because you're not going to be express air shipping things out, right? You're going to put them on a boat. But if you do that, you save money too because you can get stuff shipped out. You can get a big product like this shipped out for less than it would cost you to express air a small product. The turnover on that, the velocity is a little bit slower because it's larger, bigger purchase. Therefore, your quantity, your initial batch quantity doesn't have to be as huge. So you're not worried about running out before you have your next batch ready. And for some people, if they're just starting out, they may not have as much money. Like, wait a minute, $100 product? I don't have the money for that. But you don't have to buy as many. The other thought I had on that many too, and this is so good, is, is long-term, the margins, you mentioned this, I'm thinking about PPC, the opportunity to have margins so that you can play with it. Your A cost might be crazy for a while, so you get the data, so you can bring it down. You have so much more room to learn with that product than if it's like, you know, a $12, $10 product and you're like, man, I just lost a dollar. <laughs> it hurts. There's, no margin. There's yeah. nothing left. Like you're taking off the hairs, you know? Yeah. So. I actually got a, a brand new story. It just happened uh, just a couple of days ago, actually the day before yesterday. Uh, so my girlfriend, I'm, she, she quit her, her corporate job. She's doing Amazon now. Nice. She's been, she had the worst experience with her product. She did go with a, a oversized product. Well, welcome to the early days of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Right. So following all my instructions, found a supplier, got the stuff. They finished it all. Um, it, got everything packed, ready to ship it out to the, the boat. And then it rained out there. And so it rained on all the boxes and it mis messed up all her stuff. So she had to do another inspection. She had water damage. She had to inspect it when it got back here to make sure it didn't smell weird. She just went through the ringer with this stuff. She finally got it in. Uh, she did the whole uh, process that, you know, that I teach uh, to get stuff uh, ranked. She yeah. didn't have to give away that many units because again, it's a smaller number of units that you have to, that you're selling every single day. Um, she's ranking really well, did uh, awesome. She's already doing, uh, I would say uh, she's on pace to do, to, to do a million dollars for the year. Right. And she wow. just started doing this, but it took her a while to get here. You know, it took her a few months yeah. to get, to get to that point. But I am, you know what, if you can find the right product, do a lot of research, right. You spend some time, take your time finding a product. Just don't jump into it. And then do this guys. Um, 
order all your stuff. I, this is how we do it. We order all the stuff, all the competitive uh, competitor stuff from Amazon. We bring these things in. We look at them. And we see which ones we really like. You, you're going to find for some reason you like this one. Then you can go to a site, um, you know, to some kind of an import site, Panjeev or whatever, and you can actually look, you can use those to look up the, um, the suppliers, right? And if, if they're, they're listed, if they're using somebody in China or whatever, and you can actually find the supplier, that, per, that person's supplier, and then you can go directly to them, right? And then it kind of, it sidesteps a lot of the delays that you have from, you know, ordering from 17 different places over in China, waiting for the stuff to come. Or wondering if it's a trading company on Alibaba. How do I not can trust them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And always, guys, use an inspection company. There's a ton of them out there. Alibaba yeah. has, I think if you go to, ins it's like inspections.top, no, uh, Alibaba.com or something like that. They have like 150 different inspection companies. Use one every single time, no matter how many times you've been dealing with a company, there's going to be management turnover. They're going to try to do cheaper things. It might be perfect for the first three orders, but maybe by the fourth one, uh, something is wrong. They've changed something and you want to catch that. Okay. I, I do it every single time. It's only like two, 300 bucks for an inspection. It's not a big deal if you're ordering, you know, a couple thousand units, uh, just work it into the, the cost of things. And you mentioned Seth, pay-per-click, absolutely super important. When we're doing any kind of launch, we, whatever the keyword phrase is, we'll go in there and we'll, we'll, um, max out what we'll, we'll do an exact uh, match uh, campaign, right? A manual campaign. And we'll throw two, three, $4 uh, bids on that particular keyword. We don't care what the ACOS is. It could be 200%. The yeah. goal is to get as many sales for that keyword yeah. to drive it up. Right. And I was going to, Oh, and I actually forgot to mention this. So my girlfriend on her package, she was doing this. Um, bec you were talking about margins. That's where I was going with that story. Her margins are so big that she's spending, you know, she, she put her bids. She's like, she says, I'm going to bid like, uh, $2, I think it was $2.50 per click with a $500 a day budget. And she's actually almost hitting that. And I was like, oh my God, what's your ACOS? And it's like 9%, right? <laughs> and she's, and I thought she was going to be at $2 and something per click. Yeah. She, oh my goodness. She, she's crushing it with, with these super low ACOSs. And if I'm selling this for nine bucks, it's hard to get a 9% right. ACOS. Sometimes I like to ask people this question. I'll say, look, especially for a new seller, they just launched, they're starting to do their PPCI campaign. I'll say, look, would you spend $500 a day on advertising that product? And they'll go, no way, that's crazy. So what if you spent $500 a day, but you got 3,000 back, now would you do it? Well, of course I would. It's just a matter of taking the money and managing it, putting it in the right place, so it makes you a profit. That's awesome. Absolutely, and again, going to the bigger products, right? Because there's not that many sellers, right? There might, there's gonna be a thousand sellers selling this, but if I'm selling some, you know, let's say it's a super, let's say this was 200 bucks, there might only be five people selling this. My pay-per-click competition is minimal. I don't have that many people bidding on this thing because, you know, not that many people are in it. So if you know just a little bit more, I mean, most Amazon sellers don't know that much. It's funny. If you talk to 99% of people out there, they, they're not even part of a Facebook group community. They're not watching videos like this. They're, yes, they're, they're soloing. Like, right? They're trying it on their own. Yep. Yeah. So you guys watching the show right now know more than 99% of the people out there and you can just crush people with, uh, with PPC. And this sounds super negative, but it's true, you guys. The majority of sellers on Amazon are not making any money. That's the truth. Um, one report showed that if you look at all the people with a Seller Central account, so this would obviously include non-active sellers, that 99 to almost 100%, the statistic, are making zero money. Well, what does that mean? That might sound discouraging at first, but think about it. If you're making $100 a month, a, a thousand a month. If you're listening to this podcast right now, your chances for success are already exponentially way greater. Not because this one podcast is going to save you, but you're thinking, you're obviously trying to get the data. So you do it the right way. You have to educate yourself. And I think knowledge and as well as time is one of the most underrated, undervalued assets that we have as businessmen and women. We need knowledge. That knowledge is how you turn nothing into something, zero into money that turns into cash. Um, guys, I'm really looking forward to having Manny Coates at the summit. He's going to be in Las Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel. He's going to teach you how to rank your product to the top of search re results using any keyword. That's a high, that's a high standard, brother. You it know, works. I mean, I, I do I it know. with my own products. Uh, I, I did it with my girlfriend's products. I've done yeah. it with uh, tons of friends. Um, we, we have the, we have, I know it's going to sound like a weird name, but we have the Illuminati mastermind, which is a live, you know, $10,000 
per person to attend these kinds of events. Um, oh, these guys, do you guys play the Illuminati music with it? The do 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 do. Yeah, when I, I told when I told my kids about that, they just started laughing. They said, what? Really? It's Illuminati? They thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's interesting is walking around with the Illuminati badges, you know, around right. the hotel and stuff. People want to right. stop and be like, hey, wait a like, second. What? what is that? It gets their attention. Yeah. That's really cool. Seth just mentioned most of the time I go to an event. I learned something. I'll learn a couple things, but I learned most of it from meeting somebody and then we're at the bar having a beer and they're like, a hey, random conversation, a handshake. And oh my goodness, that yeah. works. I didn't ever think of that. That makes so much sense. It, it's super, yeah. super cool. So um, I'm, I would say if you have the time, you have the resources to do it, go to as many events as possible and get, put yourself out there. You're, you know, it's kind of weird and awkward if you're an introvert to actually go up to someone and just introduce yourself, you know, um, but you, you've got to be that person. You got to do it. Um, and hopefully, you know, at your event, uh, I mean, I'm going to be talking to everybody. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and if you guys are there, come and say hi. I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one and just, just chat. I think we're going to have a booth there. I think our people set that up. So we'll, uh, we'll have some people around there that can also talk as well. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much, Manny, for being on here today. Everybody, if you haven't done it yet, sign up for the Summit Conference. Click the link below. We also have several links below you're going to see for some of these awesome resources that Manny has talked about um, and his AMPM podcast. Thank you so much, Manny, and have an awesome day, brother. Thanks. Keep crushing it. Take care.